think there's a couple more people here than the plan, which is awesome. Um, so okay. can we say names for sure? So we get you on our list, and then can we get your emails too, so we can keep you looped in. Sure. We've got most of most of you guys, I think. Yeah, mine's on there. But I think and I can maybe Grace and Albert. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be. Yeah. So just names for now. Perfect. We'll follow up. Okay, we'll start with Tom since he's standing. Okay, I'm Tom Shepard. I'm the president of the Southeast Task Force. Thank you. And oh. your email? Or, oh, oh. 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 Yeah. I just gave him a card. We need a card. Okay, I'm Grace Soa. S-O-W-A. Okay. 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 And Judith Lahoda, I'm the president of the Calumet Ecological Park Association, and I gave you my card, my emails. And uh, I'm Joanne Podkold. Um, some time ago, we were working with the Calumet Stewardship Initiative, which was um, the coming together of about 40 different organizations in this area, and we were amazed at how much everybody was working to move things forward. That's why I was so delighted to see that people here today that that happened too. Uh, and um, I, I just back up Kevin. Okay. Oh, you took my line. I was just going to say I'm, I'm your shadow. So it's, yeah, Kevin Murphy, I'm a resident of the East Side. Do you have? Very active video videographer in the South East. Yes. Very active. All right. I'm Albert Soa, and I'm nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. You're yeah. racist. Yeah, there you go. There's Whatever. something. There's, there's an organization you belong to. My name is Scott Ferris. I am the principal with uh, the Coda Group. I'm Sarah White. I'm a planner and a landscape architect with the Coda Group. I'm Terry Schwartz. I'm a planner with the Coda Group. I'm Becky Burley with the Coda Group. I sort of like to deal with public, talk to the public. So we are thankful for your time today, first of all. Appreciate the fact that everybody at 5 o'clock in the evening gave us a time around supper. So we will um, uh, be cognizant of your time this evening. Lakota Group uh, was hired uh, about two months ago? Two, yeah, months a couple ago? Months two or three months ago by Chicago Park District through a grant from Chicago Community Trust to um, do a feasibility study a analysis of how we can get back on track with the dollars that are sitting waiting to be used for an environmental center that you all are familiar with in the recent past. Not uh, the recent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, recent. How far <laughs> you would say recent can depend who you're talking to. Uh, Talk 2007 contract signed by yes, the Yes, exactly right. So. This is, obviously this has been sitting idle for quite some time. We understand there's a lot, a lot of history behind it, how it happened, where the money came from, all of the people that are involved, a lot of emotion, and a lot of people that really invested a tremendous amount of time moving this forward. And Park District said, you know, we've, we've got that money, and we've got to use that money. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's not something we want to let sit idle. We've got to figure out where, when, how, and get it back on track. Before we do that, let's take just a little time out and reevaluate everything that we know from the past, where we want to see this happen. Is the program, the idea for this facility, or something different has it changed? People thought of different things, new ideas. Obviously, the world has changed, and that's changed for everybody here. Um, where and where are we going to get the best benefit for the money that we have available? And the money that we have available is... Uh, you know, I, I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news, but everybody knows it's still a six million dollar project, not a not the twenty five million dollar project that came out of some beautiful design process. It is not our process to evaluate the former design. It was spectacular. It was extremely well done, and it I'm sure met everybody's expectations and uh, imaginations and then some. But at the end of the day. What we need to do is find out how to best use the six million dollars that's available and get something done so that everybody benefits from this. And so in our effort to make sure that we do that properly, Park District wants us to reach out to a huge 
I would call it huge because there's just the four of us here that are really doing the work, a huge stakeholder older group. Everybody that was involved in the past uh, that, that we that I identified to, talk to them, find out what the history was, find out what concerns are out there, find out what opportunities we haven't even untapped yet that are, that are available to us. Give us your thoughts. We have no preconceived ideas or solutions to the problem. In fact, at the end of the day, it isn't our goal to redesign anything or, or to come up with a new plan. It's our idea to say, how do we use it wisely? Where do we use it to get the best benefit? And have we tapped all the constituents to make sure that all their voices have been heard in this process and put it back on track? Then it'll move forward. Until then, it's just out there and everybody's wondering how are we going to get it done and nobody wants to take ownership. So the Park District said, figure it out, talk to the community, a couple of community workshops, open houses to get people invested, reach out to the key stakeholder groups. That's what we're doing tonight. We've, we started this process yesterday and had about four folks that we talked to, including your alderman, uh, Alderman Beal and Alderman uh, Polk. Uh, we are slowly working our way through a lot of folks over the next two or three weeks. So you're one of the first groups. We haven't heard all the history, but we've heard lots of stories, and, and storytelling is part of the game here. Uh, and we understand that there's a lot of different interests and a lot of different emotions that are tied to this land. It's a special place. We recognize that. We're planners, landscape architects. We do this type of work all over the country, so it's not new to us, and it's in our backyard. We're all from here, so it's not like we're flown in from out of town. Our office is down in the city, and we do a, a tremendous amount of work here. So again, thank you for the time. Open it up to you on thoughts, questions you have about the process, or uh, before we uh, hmm? commenting on something hmm? that you said, you said six point eight million. Um, yeah, six million dollars is what they have in their budget. There may be some matching funds. All right, funds there was there. six million dollars uh, from a Ford company, hmm? and there was three million from the state. Hmm? Has that gone away? No, that's still there. It's still there. So it's six million plus plus the, the three. There's nine. Six million there's dollars. Eight or is nine a, left. Yeah, six million dollars is a real number that sits in a an account somewhere from okay. the Ford Motor Company, and you all know that. And all at right. the time this was all pledged, they were trying to leverage multiple players, which included the city, the state, maybe even the park district at some point in time. At that time in the past, do you remember there was a three million dollar? state match that's still on the table for discussion i don't know where it is specifically but okay but the six million is in the six in the million bank. and ford is like is they're going to use okay. it or not use it that's <coughs> basically the question but. and part of that was also operations right so when the when this when ford motor company gave and again we're, we need to get you may have more information than we yeah, do what we understand sure. is that when they made the pledge <coughs> for the money they said uh, of the six million dollars, three million is for a facility or a building or a capital, and three million dollars is really for programming operations. We got to think about that too. It's not just about go build something nice yeah, and then who's going to take explained. care of it. Yeah, yeah that was, never explained, never explained, but it was never and, and they and they've gone back and it's not it's not mandated. So okay. that if you needed all the six million, that's fine. But we've been told, and it's it's the fact, no matter where you are or what you're doing, somebody's got to take care of this facility, so we got to be cognizant. It can't just be, here you go, and... So in the cost will be not not only the build, the building of it, uh, and the... I think you should think that way, it's important. Of it, exactly. But also the maintenance of it. Yes. And the staffing. And the staffing, or not. Or Is the there years. a number? No, there's no number, but, because uh, here's the reason there's no number, and here's what we're finding, and again, I, I need you, we need you to tell us because we're kind of learning this on the fly. There was never a program for this building. It was merely everybody had a vision, mm -hmm. a vision, and the vision was we're gonna we are gonna take this cultural resource that we we call the southeast side in the Calumet region, and we're gonna marry industry, economic development, and environment. We're going to lock them together and we're going to have the state-of-the-art place so we can tell a story for generations, okay? That was the vision. And on top of that vision, people said, we've got some great locations where we think something like this could happen. And then there was a workshop. This is how we understand it. There was workshops and charrettes and designing and thinking and all kinds of great mm -hmm. ideas. Juices were flowing and it came out really good. And then it went out for a design competition. And what came back was a unbelievable submissions from so many great designers. But they were, none of them were tied to a real program, meaning nothing was said, we need a bathroom, 
We need classroom space. We need two of these and four of those and three of those. And oh, by the way, we only have a budget to work with and that's X. And we don't really know who all the people are that are going to be programming operations out of this. Is it the school system? Is it the field museum? Is it a variety of user groups that want to be the in there? The park district wasn't even. Nobody knew. Yeah, no, so yeah. they went off and, and this, again, this is us yeah, telling you. Still, yeah. They designed an unbelievable Taj Mahal. Everybody loved it. Everybody mm -hmm. fell in love with it. Then they priced it, and then they came back and said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't build that. So hopes are high down to here versus the real world, which says we have six million. Here's the program. You architect, beautiful designers, come back with something that meets all these objectives and knock our socks off. So we're down here still, and everybody still wants to do this. We just want to make sure, what is it, what do we want? What do we want? Not well, a Taj Mahal. Not a Taj Mahal, exactly. Absolutely not. Kind of doesn't this speak to this concept. It is <laughs> self sustaining. Mm -hmm. It does not use anything mm -hmm. from the city. Certainly. Off the grid. No Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. no. But, but, so but, you're you know, absolutely saying, right. But I did remember some talk about the fact that there would be a conference hall. There would be areas for people to spend, stay because they would be doing research. Right. So there was some concept of some programming there. So oh, there were ideas, but right. they weren't quantified in a square footage. So, so no, yeah. but it was like they did have intentions, and so there Lab was some space. ideas. Lab yeah, space, right? right. A beautiful yes. outdoor deck space, yes. whatever it is. There was even talk that maybe we would be relocated from here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. With the camera stewardship. Which, which is which is what you want to do. You want to go out and find your program and your users and then place them in a facility that meets their needs and what they have. And then you build the shell and the... Have you ever read <coughs> Jerry Atter's description of this building? Mm -mm, mm -mm. I will I will give this to you. Yeah. It's we make really a copy. the very... I have copies. Yes. Uh, it's the very best description. Um, I think you'll be surprised. Okay. Uh, is that the Tribune article? No. Yeah. This is the Tribune. Jerry and Terra was the only staff. Okay. Jerry and Terra was yeah. in the department. The department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. And whoever wants a copy. I think it's really the very best description. Oh, good. Oh, there's multiple yeah, copies here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's dense, but it's worth reading. So, 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 give us, give us a sense of if, because what we're hearing from everybody, which is most informative to us, is just the whole history of the process, so we understand it from the different eyes that have been involved in this. You know, how it came to be where it ended, what people feel, is there, if people are angry that nothing's happened, I mean, just whatever. Um, my understanding, and, and I'm sure Judy, mm -hmm. I got it. add in, or correct me if I'm mistaken, um, this was something that Marion Burns, who was yep. mm -hmm. a, a very involved, mm -hmm. uh, and the competition was worldwide. It was not just the United States. Um, the, I think the decisions were made at IIT. She went to IIT and... Architecture. Uh, architecture school. Right. Yeah. And um, this, these windows here had all the pictures of the competitors. And I remember the Japanese was an A. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you may know all this. Well, we saw some of them. They were unbelievably cool. I mean, I from today a, going, yeah. going through at the park district. Yeah. So I, I know more than these guys, for sure. So I'll so keep going. But well, you can hear from uh, you. Ed. No, we want to hear what you guys Yeah, I just appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we were very, very excited. And, and I've never quit being excited. This yeah. is one of my pet <laughs> for everybody. Um, I, I think 
that we had a lot of promises uh, along the way, and we, or at least I, really thought that this was going to happen. Um, I have a quote from um, so this is from November 2nd, 2011. The mayor's, what I think replaced the Department of Environment. Right. Uh, the Mayor's Nature and Wildlife Advisory <coughs> Committee. Meeting minutes. And among others, Jerry Adelman was there, Doug Stokes was mm -hmm. there, and those are names we mm -hmm. all know. Mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about the Millennium Reserve. And, uh, and this is a direct quote. The Millennium Reserve will also expand the conversion of brownfields to public open space and urban agriculture and fast track the completion of the Ford Calumet Environmental Center to serve as a restoration job training academy. Now, well, of course, it's always money. Where does the money come from anyway, even if the Millennium Reserve is part of it? Um, I've just been thinking a whole lot about how could, what sources could there be for money? I would say academy might not be the word we want. I, I would say make it a two-year public school. This would involve the city. Make it something that Sierra Club and Open Lands would design courses for. And once you complete that two years, you have a job. You are guaranteed a job. These are such big buzzwords today. But I think an academy is a little elitist. I think a <coughs> kid in the city should have an opportunity to come to a public school. This is not a small building. I, I don't know whether you have, uh, we all have a small picture, mm -hmm. but this was one of their uh, brochures, and it's really a long building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have this. Yeah, we do have that. Yeah, we do. So, I'm wondering about TIF funds. That's actually a question that we had just asked the other day, and I am unprepared and don't know what the TIF situation is. Well, around Peggy and I got on the Cadillac River TIF, and yeah. there is zero amount of money in there, and there should be money because. That TIF involves uh, waste management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole waste management. Is this what you? But I don't know if Heck was was that how in this this TIF? TIF? No. Okay. It was next, right next to it. Yeah, and TIF not, monies can be used. It can be poured for adjacent. Yeah. There mm -hmm. are no buildings there right. except for some some houses next to the river you know yeah they're mostly clubhouses mm -hmm. next to the river I'm not but sure uh, tiff money was used to enhance the streets and i don't the always yeah. you know it's a zero and part. there is a large <laughs> that does not street that's blocked money off money now but there is a street here right. yeah we walked that, that would be right in front of the site 
Yeah. Or on the side of the site come in. You know. Yeah, we walked down the road. Is that the one that goes to the... I think we're missing what Grace is saying. Yeah, but that no, that would be TIF okay. money sure. that we see. Is, there's zero now, because I just looked on the account. Mm -hmm. There's zero right. money in there. I have no idea why there's zero money. But uh, we, we got on that TIF board, the advisory board, specifically so that we could well. guide some of that TIF money mm -hmm. to um, Do you sit, on, you sit on the board now? Well, yeah. technically, there yes. is a board. I mean, Even it's just that because there hasn't been money. any activity there, we haven't been meeting about anything. Is okay. that the only TIF? Is that the only TIF? Uh, I'm it's assuming that another one. TIF. Hegwish may be in yeah. it. It's own it TIF. Yeah, so, yeah. but the point is, yeah, I know yeah. that you can port money industrial back and forth tip. I think it's if they want to. Mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah, industrial, industrial tip, right. Just straight right. map. Do you have this? Yeah, I think we do have I mean, you can get it easily. Yeah, yeah it's online. I haven't, no, I haven't. Or, um, no, we are map. the Calumet River tip. Right. Okay. 168. And if you want to take a look at that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it was no. in the, just no, the no, site just was in the community. Well, it doesn't make any difference. There's no money in there. Anyway, well, we don't know. <laughs> right. It's, 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 it's coming in the It says zero. Yeah, um, what does it But anyway, that's the tip money. Oh, yeah. 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 But, you know, I wanted to add on to what Grace said. I've never heard that proposal before, and it sort of makes sense. But I would also like to see multi-purpose, simply because mm -hmm. my impression of the purpose for putting that environmental center there was, first of all, to have something sort of near the North Park Nature Center, we have something south. And that's very yes. important because yeah. we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. That's that number one. That. Number two, because of the nature of the fact that it's a marsh and it's open space. People don't necessarily gravitate to those things unless you kind of bring them in. You have to have something to attract them to pull them in. Right. So we thought that it was very important that that center be built so that people will gravitate toward that marsh. Mm -hmm. And then that center would act as a catalyst for everything else that's over there because there's other land adjacent to that property that perhaps could be developed. We wanted to see the river banks developed. We wanted to see other projects other than just that environmental center, but that would be the catalyst. In the same way that the bicycle park is now a catalyst, we hope, mm -hmm. for big march and mm -hmm. things to happen over there, now we need something over here. Those lands are so fragmented mm -hmm. that each should have its own draw, its own attraction, what makes them interesting. And so that would be what makes Hedwish Marsh interesting. Not that it's a marsh so much as that it has other things going on, and so people can enjoy all of whatever it has to offer. So that's why we felt that that environmental center being built was extremely important. As far as that being the center of things, it, it could be the center of things, especially for schools because right now, schools and even private organizations are having so many events for children and families in the forest preserves. I mean, I have a whole list of things on my, on my newsletter that they're having in the forest preserves. It's forest, that's all the events, mm -hmm. and I didn't cover all of them just for one month. And they're, they're going into the forest preserves, which do not have a, a house, a facility for them to go into. So they're basically doing it when the weather is good. Uh, they can't do it in, in extreme weather. They can't sit around and, and do things uh, too much unless the weather is nice. What? Oh. I'm not online with it. I just do a print and do old fashioned printing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And so um, the the only facility near here would be Sand Ridge Nature Center. Mm -hmm. But that's a forest preserve in the Cook County Forest Preserve District. 
but the schools, I don't think the schools in the Chicago area go to uh, go to Calumet City. To yeah. the forces, they don't. And we have a lot of schools in this area that are without a, a facility that they could go into any time they have uh, programs. Uh, we do have a conservation area here, Wolf Lake, but the times it's limited. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need a larger facility that the children can come into any time of the year. And uh, when I looked at the North Park Village facility, mm -hmm. The comments on there, one of the first comments I saw on Yelp mm -hmm. was that it's too small. Mm -hmm. The facility is too small. And if you go into Sand Ridge, they're going to tell you it's too small. Mm -hmm. They have programs all the time. They have a common room, and the, their, but their work area is yes. small. It's very tight. It's if we put up the building as it's designed, with classrooms and research area, it should be big enough to accommodate that. So I think we really need something like that here. And like they've said, we, we've been promised that. And they were going to build a third uh, facility on the west side. And if this doesn't happen, they'll never get it on the west side. The one that they have. About with that? The side. Chicago Park District built. Um, uh, they had they have North Park, Village. actually mm -hmm. it was DOE, right. North Park Village, and they were going to build this the South uh, um, na Nature Center. Mm -hmm. Then the third one was going to be on the West Side. Not defined yet where. No, uh, they mm -hmm. hadn't gotten that far. The one that they used on the West Side was the training center for all the um, Chicago Conservation Corps programs. It was the renovated facility. And but Sacramento. there was no. But the new point facility. was that there were two parts of Chicago that already had something, and there was well, nothing the, here. The green technology. Yeah. Green, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's not. It's not quite the same. That's not it's the same thing. Yeah. But it was because we have Green Corps. We had Green Corps. Actually, they were in this. They were in this near, building in for a long time, and they were going to be, I guess, going to. Mm -hmm. Well, they ended up. We're talking to a couple of those, those folks in the next. It would be good for us to find out from North Park, North Park, um, the size of their buildings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the programs that are in there and try and do a little understand of square foot programs mm -hmm. and what their operating costs are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's only 48 acres, I think? North Park, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's only small, 48 acres. We're small. talking 120 acres. Right. I think it's 120 acres if I have the right information. <coughs> so, and being that it's on a main thoroughfare once it gets finished, mm -hmm. <laughs> we've been waiting for years. Nin uh, 2015 now. And next mm -hmm. summer, that's yes, right it'll be right. You know, on the main drag. I mean, people from all over can get. Will be able to get to it easily. It very, very easily, and, and it should be visible from the road, which is another mm -hmm. wonderful attraction. Yeah. And then it has the the bird flyway, the river at, in the back. I mean, perfect for birders. We were the group who stopped the police from having a gun range on the other side of the river. We've heard, we found, right, We've heard about this. We've heard about it. We were out. We were <laughs> out. We were 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 out. To Where did you see, get that stuffed eagle? That's what I want. Tell us something that the environmental center needs to be put there. Rent an eagle. Yeah. It was a public building commission. Is that who you were? Who were you? We were. Uh, we were talking to uh, um, the MWRD. MWRD mm -hmm. because they were the landlords. We were went to their meetings. They were the landlords. Oh. Yeah. Never got as far as the public building. Oh. No. Yeah. Okay. Now the park district. Well, you don't want to put put it there. Park just took over that property that we were. Oh, really? Now? About. Yes. 
They don't know so what that's they're doing. That's yeah, that's they should why, talk to us. Yeah. That's why we need something to happen there to start this whole the momentum at that end where things aren't mm -hmm. happening so much. Everything yeah. seems to be right now north, like I said, with the big marsh plans. And I know mm -hmm. that's just the beginning because it's a humongous undertaking. All of these things are, and I understand that. But that's all the more reason why we like the idea of the plans that were put in place, mm -hmm. that they be, you know, go forward on them because they made sense. And they, to us, they still make sense. Yeah. Even if they have to be built in phases. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The architect talked about that. Um, at one of the meetings that they had last year, that they're looking at building it in phases, mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't cost um, the cost wouldn't be so much of a big lump all at one time. Yes. And also, you know, once something gets started, yes, and, more and to people attract will come on board. people. I mean, yeah. You. The key to every great project that's ever been built is having consensus and being realistic about what your ability to get it done is. And then once you get make that, you'll get people to buy, like you're saying, you'll get people to buy and you'll be able to market, you'll be able to fundraise because you'll have something that everybody <coughs> can buy into and it has a positive energy around it. And I think, I mean, that's a really important thing because no matter what happens, where it goes, how big it is, phased or not phased, you gotta have everybody approach it from a positive standpoint and all be on board because if there's any negativity that energy sucks everything out of the project it really it really does and, and so I think that, what i think that big road project stuck a pin in the balloon yeah. too yeah. Yeah. It, may, it may have i don't know yeah, I don't know. It, yeah. it really did i mean it, oh, yeah. people it around here are just worried about how am i going to get up yeah. around this monstrosity and and that's been a big thing well, what's the time period that's been going on I think next year it's this supposed to be, be so part, part, partly, but then, but then they're going to start oh. work on the South Bridge, so well, it's still it's incomplete. Yeah. 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 Well, the economic downturn, too, so it just everything got well, harder. The little down. restaurant closed, the little food store closed, um, and the bars, Jerry said the other day along the river there, are, they're really hurting. They're really hurting because people can't because get to them. Can't get through there. Yeah. 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 But, I, but I think you know what you're talking about it really deflated people and, and right and right. then we had to go out there and battle with the, the uh, contractors there that in, encroached on the uh the wetlands, proper, the, the yeah. wetlands there so yeah. you know, that was another battle that that had to be fought and when you're out fighting battles it's hard to think about the mm -hmm. positives while you're putting I out fires I, I just i mean i just you have a vision, you have a direction, you have momentum. You just have to harness it and package it into, in my opinion, just a smaller budget so you can get it going. Just get it going. That's the most mm -hmm. important. Because once it's in motion, it's in motion. Just like the road, once they started, they had to keep going. There was no turning back. So it's more about, you know, saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. So phasing, that may be a, that may be an answer to the pro the process or to the pro to the problem of being able to get what you want at the end of the day. But this programming and what goes in and who uses it, I still think that's a really big piece that everybody needs to spend the time to think about what it is because if it is more than what's in a, in the pot, somebody's gonna have to answer for why it's more than the pot. And then somebody's gonna have to answer who's taking care of it. I, I can't believe that anybody would spend any money until they know well, who's gonna take care of it and who's gonna pay for it. Well with 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 uh Grace's suggestion yeah. of job training. Yeah, I love that. There may be yeah. additional funding that you could draw upon right. because mm -hmm. job I'm training sure is. is like the buzzword always. Mm -hmm. So if there's some way to utilize that mm -hmm. to yeah. right. you know, parlay it into more money for mm -hmm. the actual. I mean, and there you yep. have your programming. Yep. You're part of the programming right there. I mean, right. that's. You see, kind of Open like, Lands has a leadership program right now for right. students. And it's going so well that they're they're trying to make it a 12-month program instead of a, a nine-month program, and they just raised enough money to do that. So there, there is there are a lot of people out there that want to go into conservation training. Uh, it trains you for other things too, but um, 
that's that's something that just have happened. You, have you all been working with Open Lands, like with Jerry and everybody? On it? I mean, how are they, are they all? Or we've talked to Jerry, and he's like, oh yeah, this is you know, I'm mm -hmm. a, he was on the he was on the Millennium Millennium Reserve. Yeah, yeah. Right he's a vice chair. There you go. That's right. And I've known I've known him for a while, and then obviously this is his passion and his connection. He talked a lot about. I thought it was very very important because we kind of look we were thinking about the box, but what he talked about was very important about connections and linkages and trail systems. And there's oh, a yes. significant amount of trails that need to be completed and part of this mm -hmm. for this to be successful. Yes. Because not only is it just cars and access, but the world is turning more to alternative forms of transportation and biking and, and canoeing and kayaking. How you get to this thing is just as important. So, have you have you guys thought about that in terms of how that dials into this process too? The, the it trip? would be hiking. Be hiking. It would be hiking. As, but my understanding, it wouldn't involve bikes or maybe to get to it. From a to regional perspective, oh, I mean, though, bringing you people could in. certainly take a bike there. But um, I'm thinking of the, the greater region. I'm thinking of myself. Mm -hmm. I don't live here, but if I if I knew that there was a where I could park, get on a bike trail, yes. and spend an entire day doing a variety of things that are part of a system down here, that'd be very exciting to me. As opposed to just riding somewhere aimlessly and looking for this building, and then right. I saw it, and then I turn around and leave. That's the concept yeah. of the Millennium Reserve. Right. Exactly. You have a number of things. Down so here. so that so that's an important piece in. That linkages and those connections need to be right proximate to this facility, your facilities, whatever it is. Is that, and you, is that part of your thinking in terms of? Yeah, the, the water uh, usage too. Um, Lake County not using that for recreational purposes. Well, it's and not open the to river. Us, no. Not no. open to you now? Mm -hmm. It's closed down. Barbed wire? No, well, laser right, wire. I mean, like right now, but so Lake County Met is laser wired. What about the oh, river? The bubble. I mean, right. it's, it's Lake County Met, but we walked down that path. Sarah and I walked down the path, that road, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think it's core, Army Corps, or somebody controls yeah. it. It's not, it's not Park District. Yeah. And it gets you to the, it gets you to the dam or the, the lock. Yeah. And we walked down it, and I got to tell you, it was a spectacular view. Mm -hmm. Once you got down, you're like, whoa. And I want to be able to get down there and see that. And then all, we yes. start talking, how, do, how, would it, how would it be to be able to come down on a kayak or a channel cat or a little pontoon that was like almost like a water taxi that could take me from another area to here? Have you guys thought about that? Well, you have to talk to Durs Anderson. Cause yeah, we did. Done, we did. He's he done was. a lot yeah, of water trails. Yeah. Yeah. The only <laughs> problem with that site is that you've got these humongous barges yes, going through. Because mm -hmm. we've yeah. been... Through the, the yeah. locks with it in his boat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a and also on river. Yeah, and on the other end, the they have a yeah. huge boat that comes in to Lafarge, which uh, is a yeah. cement factory. Yeah. And so kayaking is on Lake Calumet. Yeah, if we could get there, but on that on that river, you got to be on a pretty good substance of boat. I, you know. For your protection, it, 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 jog, it jogs my memory. I, you're right; you have to be aware of it. But oh, yeah. one of the places that we've worked—that's almost a similar story to yours, but way down the line in motion—is the, the Mississippi River corridor through the Quad Cities. We've been working there for 20 years. Bike trails, nature centers, mm -hmm. environmental restoration. Two states, multiple jurisdictions, counties, cities—all that. It's a working river. They're never going to give up. It's a mega working river. It's it's John Deere, International Harvester, Alcoa, every major Lafarge, everybody's there, and there's kayakers and paddlers and canoers. And everybody's working with all. And and, and what we did, one of the very first things we did there, because we work for an environmental group that manages everything on the river for all of the agencies and all the institutions. Mm -hmm. The very first thing they put their dollars into after they had built a little nature center because they needed one at, at this big marsh, 500 acre marsh, <clears throat> they got funding from both sides of the, from the state to put in what they call the channel cat. And all the channel cat is a little pontoon boat, captained by a licensed boating captain, 
who obviously was a retiree mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And all summer long, all they do is go to ports back and forth across this mm -hmm. Mississippi River, taking bicyclists to connect the trails on both sides of the river. Yeah, and get I'm people looking for a job like that. Well, I'm, no. I'm just saying these are these are these are the these are the. I'm just trying to get ahead of all the unique opportunities well, that that site has. That's why we look upon this as a catalyst. We have other things yes. to yes. have. We could never fit all that in. Well, they do. They, they, they do get it they in do. there. Now, that county map is not the Mississippi. I know it's not, but you know, here's what, here's what I'm not, I'm not telling you to repeat. If you look at our climate area vision, we do have some bicycle trails. Up yeah. In. Yeah, so we do have the water. We recognize the waterway as possible recreational area. So, I mean, we've given that stuff thought. Mm -hmm. But like I said, um, it's important to make sure all those things are dialed into your vision of where this mm -hmm. element goes yeah. because that's... Those are pieces that are just as important to the success of it as the actual mm -hmm. uh, the building itself. The other right. thing that, that we did that was a lot of fun, we got Blair Kamen to come out. Mm -hmm. And he loved the spot here. Mm -hmm. He had no idea what a wonderful spot that is. So he wrote this nice, yeah, and I showed them. Yeah, I saw the pictures of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. some of them. Well, yeah. that, that, that uh, helps. And they sent, <laughs> yes. and they sent uh, his name is E. Jason yeah. Wong. Wong, yeah. Wong, yeah. Wong yeah. Gang, who was a famous, he's, a, he's a named after winning, a famous baseball player. Photographer. What did that baseball player? Wong Gantz, yeah. He, uh, he was made the only un unassisted triple triple play oh. in, in the World wow. Series. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, and un 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 unassisted triple play. Yeah. Yeah. Triple anyway, out or whatever. No, a lot has Jason already came been out done. and yeah. he was absolutely belonged. He away. made a special trip. And he, yeah. he spent quite a long time. <laughs> yes, we, with we our, dragged him around. Our local bird. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this is a triple play. Yeah. So I think getting the press is also key. Yeah. Or at least that's yes. what we have in mind. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of work that has already been done on Hegwish Marsh itself. And uh, Green Corps is in there all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand that uh, our friend from that works at the Sandwich Nature Center had a bunch of 20, uh, 20 kids out there on a camp out. Kevin, they participated yes. were saying they were camping out. They had a camp out. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's I already it. being used, but there's no parking. There's no parking. Mm -hmm. The park off the road, uh, off of the street. road, yeah. and it, it's tough to get in there. You can't get in there. The site looks great, though. We we thought. I mean, it's clean. Yeah, no but you can't like, get to it. It's yeah, like, hard to get to. All of those sites, like all those sites right now, right. all those sites are there, but people really cannot utilize any of them because they don't have the infrastructure in place yet mm -hmm. that would allow mm -hmm. people to come and utilize those sites. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you've got a job with us. And it's a wonderful thing. I mean, if I, if I were young and I saw something like that, mm -hmm. I'd be on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's, these are wonderful plans, and I think they could be used in this way, too. Grace was a teacher uh, in college for a few years, and uh, Joanne was a teacher in high school, in our local high school. Oh, cool. So we've got people that know what the kids want and need. And also what some yes. of the limitations are in, in something like CES, which yes. is... Uh, yeah, they don't always stay with innovation. They they, they lose track of things. <laughs> so maybe it's got to take a, a different route. But also, there was an interest uh, in bringing together a lot of the colleges and universities mm -hmm. uh, through the um, Calumet area, throughout the Calumet area. Mark Bowman would have, would be yeah. the person to talk to in regard to that. We sat with him this morning. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah. And he's Field Museum. Now, yeah, so. yes. Yeah. We'll it's, probably it's circle really back great. with him because he's, he's like great. a wealth of knowledge. Yes. Yeah. 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 And they were hoping to have a capstone uh, project <coughs> for all of the universities where they could use the resources here. That would be great. Mm -hmm. And Peggy sent something around just the other day also about uh, a program that would involve students in boat building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And learning how to navigate things mm -hmm. as small as the Calumet River. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> we had many, many trips oh, yeah. up and down the river. And um, it's, uh, I cannot express this strongly enough that it is a working river. Yes. You know, all yeah, around quick. barges. Mm -hmm. And it has curves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not. You know, that's all very true. But look what's happened to the industry that was here in the last 20 years, yeah. 30 years, half of it's gone. So who knows in 20 years how a working river might no longer be a working river. I mean, this is, I mean, so I think it's a good idea to have a vision. That vision may not come true now, but it's something to yeah. think about as possibilities sometime in the future. And that's why it's kind of nice being located on the river. Oh, definitely. River yes. access yes. is a big, big plus. It is wonderful. Mm -hmm. now, I think this is a 50-year plan. You need to be Probably. thinking about it that far. I've lived that long, I might be able to see that. <laughs> yeah, we will see that. That's the other reason. Every time we have an idea and it starts coming down, That's the other reason we're oh, pushing just wait around for another 10 or 20 no. years. <laughs> something right before we're gone. Right. So we're pushing this. It's oh, like, come on, we got to see something change. The something that might be first. fairly modest also. Uh, mm -hmm. It's our understanding through Daniel Goldfarb who worked with um, kids programs, who worked with uh, the program that uh, Vic Crivello created on time at Is My Backyard and mm -hmm. Saturday mm -hmm. trips for kids to do all kinds of environmental stuff and restoration. Uh, but Daniel says that Kinder Morgan and there's a branch of Kinder Morgan right here, uh, has a science barge on Chesapeake Bay that kids use. So maybe this Kinder Morgan in our area cool. might be interested in doing something, something comparable. Like that. And that would fit in with mm -hmm. the pontoon boat mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, and there, it could be based then at Best Nest. I think you... you for instance, you said something about, I, want, I go there, I look at the building, and so I saw it. And I think that devalues that thing. Uh, we go to look at beautiful things, and that's important. So everything everybody's talking about, you could just be talking about putting it in a barn. But what we have here is really a world-class, beautiful kind of thing. Design. And uh, people will come to look at it. I go to Pennsylvania every once in a while to look at the falling water house, for instance, as an example. I mean, I'm not equating that with falling water house. We go out and see Farnsworth House, too, out mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. and that's a pretty simple, but it's a beautiful experience. And, uh, and I think that's something that you should not uh, forget about. It's a, right. a beautiful building, which I think this would be. Is a, is a wonderful thing to see, and it enriches your life to see something like that. Mm -hmm. So, 
that could, you're thinking about a purpose. Well, <coughs> I guess that's a purpose. It's a. I agree with you. It, it, it is. It can. It can be enriching. It can be a landmark type of piece. Um, but there are there are those who could say I'm playing dead devil's advocate. I don't have an opinion. I don't. I'm. We'll shoot you down. You can shoot me down, please. I'm just. I'm throwing ideas out. I'm throwing ideas out because I want to make a good argument. What we're trying to do is develop a good argument for what this is, right. how it is, and make it move forward. That's all we're here to do. We're not designing mm -hmm. anything. How about they, a casino? A casino. Yeah, there you go. Right. Right. So, a, so in there. a lot of people would say, when I listen to the mantra of your story of this area, it's about the environment. Yes. And going to experience the environment. It's not about the building or the building. So when I'm going to this place, I want to experience the marsh and the working river. I'm not going to experience a building. Oh, you go no, to experience the building. I can do that through it's interpretive so I know I'm I'm just playing right, devil's okay, advocate. Hear flows, me out. But the building is flows from there. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're right. You're right. All the building. I love the building. It's cool. Okay. So that's it. But hear me out. I'm playing devil's advocate for those who would say, "Why are we spending six, nine, ten, twenty million dollars?" There's always going to be those out there, mm -hmm. right? So it's about the environment. It's about the experience in the environment. It's about interpreting the environment and using it and educating and all those things and seeing how industry. It's not about the building. Why are we building a building that's going to cost $10 million, $20 million to go stand in the building? That's what I'm saying. Not, I agree with you. I love that People building. will come from all over the world I because Jeannie Sang <laughs> has buildings all over the world but then to see this one. It You're is right. Game so game. You're right. <laughs> But there are going to be people who will challenge it because it's mm -hmm. a lot of money and say, is that a good investment? We're not yeah. building an architectural masterpiece. I'm not arguing with you, first of all. I'm just sharing my thoughts because I'm trying to create the understanding. So Because there's all different sides to the thing. And while we all know that we've got some money to spend on something pretty special, we want to make sure it's done and that nobody blindsides you and comes out of the woodwork and says, well, why are you doing that? Right. And Blair came and can say it's an architectural masterpiece because it is, and she's world-renowned, and everybody loves her. No question. That's just spectacular. And I would love to stand in that building that she drew and say, this is unbelievable. I just want to make sure I have an argument that says, the reason we've done this is because it, it goes beyond just the environment. It goes about the culture of the area. It's mm -hmm. telling a story. We need to have indoor space to be able to tell that story. An educator can't just be outside. It has to have this, this, and this. That, that's what I'm... It all, they also prove the sustainability of the building. Right, right. It's right there in the building committee's mm -hmm. yeah, And that papers. makes it the showcase and a yes. lesson for everybody else right. in the world to learn. Right. Also, so it's not just a building. It's a building with a purpose. Yeah, Lakeside, oh, yeah. Okay. Lakeside yeah. development, yeah. twice the size of the loop, yeah, yeah. will probably be looking at items here when they're trying mm -hmm. to figure out how they're going to build on 40 feet of slag right. and right. how they're right. going to make it, right. how they're going to fulfill their promise of making it totally green. You don't so want to give that, way. but you don't want to give up on the fact that this is a magnificent no, 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 no. You don't want to give up on that ahead of time. You say you're worried about somebody blindsiding. Well, maybe you, you can avoid that blindsiding by being powerfully for it. And that, it Along good, with yeah. the other we stuff, but don't argument. throw don't throw it away. Mm -hmm. No quality, yeah. sustainability. Those are all the pieces. You could build a barn a there for all this other but stuff. But you could, you know, a, a, a person who would want to go the green route. I'm just being devil's advocate for the cool. sake of doing it because it's, it's. I enjoy the conversation. I want to hear what you have to say. So it's the same thing would say. Well, if I want to be really sustainable and I want to honor industry, and I already know the answer because I've talked to a couple other people today that have told me, nope, not going to work. Why don't we use it in an old industrial building that we convert into and, and adaptively reuse something that that's the most sustainable solution in the whole world? Not building new. When, when they did that, Ju Judy and I yeah, were laughing. They told me there is nothing out there. So. <laughs> that's right. That's the I've already heard there's nothing out there. So I, I was there's just, nothing out there. I know. I was just throwing out there. I saw their, their green, their uh, mm. old industrial building yeah. turned into a conservation yeah. area. Big, big old building. Yeah, no, no, I get it. I, but I'm just, I'm just, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. And you've looked at it, and we talked to the older and he's like, yeah. nothing really out there. That's right. Yeah. Did you uh, see at the Museum of Contemporary Art Jeannie Gaines' uh, display with several 
uh, rooms. This was mm -hmm. a few years back. Mm -hmm. Did anyone else in Mo at MoMA? At, at the yeah. Art Institute. Chicago. Here in no. Chicago, at, at the mm -hmm. Museum yeah. of Contemporary I went to that. Mm -hmm. It was very nice. I saw her it was York. a wonderful display. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think some of the difficulties are going to come from the notion that um, many people have what I call the fixation of belief. They see an image and they believe that that image is going to become reality before it's been studied in many other ways. And primarily we think of the economics of the operation. So um, how are you going to create the cash flow to pay for the operations in, a, in an environment where the park district says we're strapped with cash, Forest Preserve to the district would be saying the same types of things. They're not ready to absorb these kinds of costs. And the only re reason I bring this up is that I, I lived in this world for 35 years. And having to manage facilities, knowing that cash flow has to come from somewhere to pay for the debt, the cost. And so what we have here is a fixation of belief that what you've seen is what you're going to get without the view of what it's really going to cost to operate the facility. So I always take the business mindset when it comes to operations because the lack of operational control will kill the project. You don't want to shutter. And, and so we have to look at the program design that will fit into a facility and the program design has to be made up of people, either people who are willing to give money for scholarship programs or from people who want to participate in activity and pay for it. And then there's that issue of mm, historically providing programs in the region that we haven't found yet has been profound. And so, <clears throat> Is it easy for us to, to put all of that into a facility that's already been designed and, and looks the way it does and it's beautiful? Yes, it's incredibly difficult because of all those infrastructure issues that have to go along with the development of that facility. So I call that the fixation of belief that has to be um, proved, whether well, you can manage that. This building unlike most buildings, is they're pretty self-sustaining. Well, you still have to have people. Yeah. You have to have support from custodial issues. You have to have this is staff where to program it, might those kinds of things. Yeah, a partner. Mm -hmm. A partner right. could be the solution to what yeah. you're saying, right? It could be. And, yeah. of course, you guys were talking about, this is the first time we heard that, that you might become occupants mm -hmm. of the facility mm -hmm. we hadn't heard that before. So some of those things can be solved, but mm -hmm. still again, how does what you're talking about now match up with the idea that you don't need a Taj Mahal? That was the first statement you said coming out. Oh, but... And is a Taj Mahal a, a cost factor? That was a mistake. That was a, not a... Have you seen the Taj Mahal? A, really? Well, at $25 million, it's pricey. Well... <laughs> To say the best. Uh, it's you, not you know, a Taj Mahal, it's an investment in a totally green facility that is going to perhaps train people mm -hmm. and become a leader in this type of construction. Not not Jeannie Gang maybe, but her toilet system. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or lighting. Uh, things like that. Uh, the use of slag. Mm -hmm. the system. Yeah. Yeah. Use of slag. You said slag. Mm -hmm. yeah. Design. Yeah. You, know, you know, I wasn't around when this competition went on and so forth, so I'm not so wedded to that particular building. I mean, the philosophy of it being self sustaining and everything, yes, but not the design necessarily. But on the other hand, when you hear Rahm Emanuel give a stadium $55 million, and what do we get here? Right. What are we getting here? What do we get here? 
It's hard for us to say, oh yeah, we'll just settle for three million and we'll just do whatever. I mean, let you know that plays into this mm -hmm. as a community. Yes. There's, sure that does. plays into it. There's no question about that, and I, so, I would hope they've done the proper it, ROI to determine when they're going to get that money back. Well, I'm just saying. My point is know. that if it can be <laughs> done over there, then we can ask for a little more over here. So I don't think that we were ready to settle for only six million dollars there has to be a way to get more money and the building should be something special it may not be the genie gang building but it should be special because i know three million doesn't build a whole lot of anything mm -hmm. so uh you know it should be something special for us and i think we deserve a little something down here well and so, i think the whole south side right. starting way north of here mm -hmm could benefit from having a nature area with a, some maybe fine instruction and ideas about, hey, I don't have to live on the street. I could work with things I love. I could work with my hands. Of course, every kid should have that opportunity to work with the hands, but uh, that's what this means to me. This is giving people, ordinary people and distressed people too. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with what I'm hearing, not with what I'm hearing, but with the fact that I may be saying something that's already been dealt with. I'm, with the audio, I have great difficulty actually hearing what's being said. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the quality of what's being said, but I, I won't know really what the conversation was about until I put this into the computer tonight. But I'm hearing parts of it, and I'm wondering, would it be, a, if you haven't said it already, should we be talking about what is the building to do? What do we want it to do? Mm -hmm. And then talk about how does the design that's, stem from that? That's, that's what we've been talk, talking about. That's exactly right. That what informs what a building should be is what goes inside of it the people that are going to use it, the parties that are a partner to it, and the programs that are going to happen. That informs how much space is needed, and that in turn informs the volume of the building, and then the outside of the building and its proximate location and shape and twisting are informed by its site, where, it go, where you set it in the mm -hmm. environment somehow. And this, we feel, in our very, very early thing, that this was designed from the outside in and that there needs to be some more internal discussion about what's happening inside to then speak back to the outside again. Well, and, and it could be it could be whatever you want it to be. It could be the, uh, but we're hearing for the first time about schooling and job. I, I, no, that doesn't show up anywhere in any of the stuff that we're seeing. So this is the well, first I think time. this is what so I would like to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm, no, but I it's have important no to hear. It. No, no, I, I think though that, that some of this comes up to understand as time goes on. Mm -hmm. We have different experiences. We see what's here. Mm -hmm. We see people jobless. Yeah. We see, you know, post-industrial. So this is maybe an opportunity that we can kind of correct that situation and accomplish more than just the environmental education and so forth. I mean, it could actually be some job training or something mm -hmm. going on there. Like it would development, the all and it would benefit the community, and it would still benefit the wider community by being an attraction, offering programming that is of interest to the public in other ways. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, why not try to accomplish more than one thing? Mm -hmm. Which is what they had said, as I understood at the beginning, with research. And, so maybe it's not research, maybe it's job training now. I think there's a lot of things that could happen. Yes. Yeah, a whole right. range of stuff that could come Now, there, I remember talk of classroom space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, community auditorium. space, auditorium. Um, multi-use auditorium mm -hmm. space, uh, public areas, that was all talked about. We had many meetings with the, uh, where the architects came and showed, showed the design and we discussed the design. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was much discussion about what was inside. Mm -hmm. But did you quantify the size and needs of the, I mean, we need a 300 person auditorium, we need four bathrooms, we need laboratories. Those are, those are the only things I, I don't know. Maybe you did, maybe you did go through all that. Well, or you just talked I about the- I remember specifically 
that that's what I'm getting at more. About the numbers or the sizes, I don't. Yeah, you you had ideas what went in. It was just is it this about big or this. Yeah, big? building mm -hmm. spaces include mm -hmm. yeah. exhibit space, auditorium, mm -hmm. media orientation, classrooms, scientists' laboratories, oh, yeah. staff and, and volunteer perfect. workspace, mm -hmm. all-purpose mm -hmm. children's. But if I were if I were loading you the money here, look at this way. If I were loading you the money, 25, 10, I don't it doesn't matter, I'm the bank. You're coming to me for a construction loan to build that building. I, you, you told me what you want to go inside it. I'm gonna, the next question is, how much square footage do you need before I give you the money? Isn't that all in the design? Have you seen the design? Yeah, so there's I know how many, and I know how many square feet, I know, I know how many square feet is everything, but the question is, how did you get to the decision what all those were because uses? because it's going back to the uses of what's going in who's using it because it, if i have five thousand square feet my electric bill is i'm, I'm just using this because no this, I, I don't know no 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 okay <laughs> but I, i'm trying to make a, a point if i have a house that's five thousand square feet my electric bill is x <clears throat> if a house is ten thousand x times two i'd like to know what all those costs are to me by being bigger or smaller and so the same thing goes to this is what are the costs because there will be costs no matter what to operate a building, well, if it's five thousand or ten thousand, you may have all those things that are on your list in a five thousand square foot shell, and I'd give that to Jeannie, and she'd come up with a beautiful same building, or I'd give it to her and say, no, I need ten thousand, and here's what it would look like. But at least I would know what I've programmed in it. What can it handle? Have, have you talked to her husband? No, I haven't gone. Oh, you anywhere. want to? He is oh, very yes. accessible. Very accessible. This morning we were with the Field Museum staff and we asked this question, what kind of spaces would be needed in a facility like this if a facility was created? Oh, we wouldn't have any idea because we don't know what the needs in the community are. And that's a real important piece because just when you have a, a group of adults <coughs> say what they would like, they understand what their needs are, but they can't possibly speak on behalf of youngsters who want to use the space. And so when you talk about needs assessment, that's that's what you do in needs assessment and, and some of the academic work I've done is, is you ask people, what do you need? What kind of stuff do you want to do? And then you begin to determine what size those spaces, what types of spaces you're going to have and that sort of thing. And that informs the architect or the designer um, how those spaces are shaped, and then it comes back to um, the owners, potential owners, the community, and that information is then shared with them to, to see, make sure there's a match between um, the spaces that are created and the spaces and how those sp spaces that are created are used. So, what we're saying to this group is. Here are the spaces you have. Create a program, and you would feel the same way if we went ahead and bypassed this group and went straight to whomever we're working for, the park district, without your input. And so that's how programmers who have to have to facilitate activities within a facility would respond. I was again. I wasn't here when all of these discussions went on and stuff. But I remember hearing at some point that some of that space had to be large enough so that it could be rented out for special events if someone had a wedding or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that gives you some idea mm -hmm. of why and how come what some purpose? of those spaces had to be a certain size because. Mm -hmm. And and again, the need was it was based on a need that in this area there isn't anything. Uh, and even the park district doesn't have any rental space within right. this area, yeah, like it does meeting elsewhere. Room, yeah. Most of uh, uh, over at Covenant Park Fieldhouse, there used to be meeting rooms, and now they're gymnastic uh, yeah. centers, right. fitness centers, right. with yeah. uh, mm -hmm. items bolted to the floor. Well, you can't have a meeting yeah. there. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're we're understand. We're all behind this whole concept. First okay. of all. It's just we want to extract more information on how, where well, now we think, you know meeting rooms. Yeah, no. Imagine you get little tidbits. Yeah. We get little tidbits of information from mm -hmm. fifty different parties that we're speaking with along the way, and it's good to cross-examine all the things that people say. Well, this is why we did. Well, this is why we did. 
so that we know because at the end of the day we want to make sure that you use that money and, 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 yes. and get something nice for it. Mm -hmm. Value added to the community. That's I know you're asking us about, for input on this, but we, originally we did have input into the plan, but yeah. it was DOE yes. people too. Right. We were not the only ones True. that were having input. That's why you're hearing, yes. well, you know, we, we may want to rent out the space yeah. for something for extra money, and uh, and the the size of the rooms in the programs were determined from what we said and what DOE input. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. So we weren't complete, and so then when the plan would come to us and they, they would show us, they would give us a review of the plan, there were spaces already on there. That they had already determined. Mm -hmm. Was already determined, that just not from us, but from mm -hmm. DOE also. Yeah, got it. What's interesting. And of course that was what, 10 years ago? That was uh, exactly. Commissioner Henderson. Time. Commissioner Henderson. Yeah. Time. One thing that's interesting, I mean, we are going to talk, we already have 85 people on the schedule. <laughs> we have been adding hand over fist more names, which is terrific. Um, talk to Mark. Uh, Mark Chanel. Yes. He'll talk to you. Uh, yeah. He's he accessible. Yeah. Mark, what's his last name? Chanel. S-C-H-E-N-D-L. Have, have you spoken to any of the local Shindel. teachers? That he's he's Gina 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 Gina. Gina. Yeah, We're working on that. Schedule well. So what I've heard just in the two days we've started this mm -hmm. is um, is a, and I can't speak to the process that I'm sure it was a very thoughtful process that mm -hmm. developed this beautiful yeah, building. Um, but there is definitely what I've heard a variety of opinions of the purposes of the building. So there's not a meeting of the minds right now, and that could be because the players have changed. It could be because times have changed. Times have changed economy has changed. Um, different facilities have come around or closed. So it's an interesting thing, not putting aside entirely the work that was done, but taking a fresh look at it mm -hmm. and facing the fact that despite this incredible uh, plan, we haven't found the funding in all these years. And one person said just today, oh, heaven help us. If Ford gets frustrated and decides to take away his funding, then we'll all feel terrible. So it's, it's more of a, I don't see it as a questioning of the process that was done before. Mm -hmm but rather an opportunity to sort of have a fresh look now, given, and to get everybody's minds around and buying in to the same, so that we can have that consensus and speak with one voice and really, as a whole community, all the many, many players really make the case, you know, both within the government and outside to make this happen. Well, we have to keep in mind that during some years, we had a severe recession. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was no help whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to uh, give ourselves a little leeway here in uh, how much that took us back. Sure. Mm -hmm. We sure. went backwards on sure. this project. Um, now, Things are better. Mm -hmm. But we lost how many years? How many years did we lose during that time? Mm -hmm. That's true. Is that contract that was signed in 07 uh, by the wayside now? What contract? There was a contract, it's on the internet, signed by Mayor Daly uh, to oh. Gina <coughs> the design. I'm, I didn't I'm, read the whole thing. There must have been some butts in there. She was paid for her. <laughs> there had to be. So she was so she was paid for all of her design work. The design work. Yeah. yeah. Are you interviewing local parents? Is there are they part of this? Because if you're talking, well, we're going to have two community open houses. Yeah. yeah okay. That's so that's we're, we're, we're not going to be able to talk to okay. parents. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I understand that, but you're do you say yes. you're here to talk to the community and find out the needs. I'm a grandma, but I'm not a young parent. I mean, you know, my two community parents, open houses mm -hmm. that cast the net out to oh, families, yeah. but yeah. focus groups with key stakeholder right. individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it's just interesting because in the in the <clears throat> day two days that we've had these conversations and the ones that I've been present at, we we've heard a lot of different focuses. Some of some of the people are talking more about the restoration of the open space. Some are focusing more on 
the programming that will happen in the building. Um, and maybe it's just a variety of purposes, but I also think people are sort of coming at it in different ways, and some of them weren't there 10 years ago. So um, it's just helpful for me to hear what this group feels is the primary purposes of this facility. Well, I think living in the community and, like I said, experiencing what's mm -hmm. been going on in the last 20, 30 years, we have a different idea of the purpose mm -hmm. and why we need that building there. Can you say like what it would have been then and how it might be different? Is there is that something? You, I mean, is that what you're thinking? Well, what I'm saying is with her mention of job training, right. mm -hmm. that maybe probably yes. would have been mentioned 30 years ago. There mm -hmm. were plenty of jobs mm -hmm. or whatever. You wouldn't think about job training. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, people didn't think about conservation in the same way, urban conservation especially. Mm -hmm. So, but we have different opinions now, and like I said, from seeing here what we we want this area. People don't even know we exist on the map. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a community resident, we feel like sometimes people don't know we're even here. Mm -hmm. So we want to start bringing people into this mm -hmm. area and understand that we're here and maybe bringing some outside dollars into the local economy and things like that. So we, we see it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Someone else who's not from this area might no, see the, programming. The, the alderman said the same thing. The, you know, the map ends at the Fuel Museum. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what he so said. Actually, and he yeah. said, uh, we got to change that. And yeah. part of that, part of this exercise is changing that in addition. So we, we, get, we get it. We do understand it. Mm -hmm. no, no, I'm just joking. No, he, I mean, he's like, yeah. he said this is, there's, a bigger, yeah. there's yeah. a bigger motive behind all this. It's not just about, it's about getting us back on the map and having the, uh, having a, a meaningful discussion that we're, we're valid. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and like I said, bringing right. people to that yeah. specific right. location because if it isn't used, like they say, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's Who right. knows? Right. If it's ignored and, and it's too it's, costly uh, for them to maintain and no one's using it, do you think it's going to uh, stay for long in the public's hands? Probably not. So we time is of the essence. claim to it yeah. now yeah. and say this is something we want Probably, to do. I mean, to that, to that point, the Park District has been a pretty good shepherd mm -hmm. making sure that it doesn't get lost. It would be really easy for that money to evaporate somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Floor could say, hey, we've got another project we want to fund in Detroit. Sorry, and it's out of here tomorrow. So there, you, The Park District is a recent. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly. right, right. So, um, and I hope truly will be a good one. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, there's somebody you might talk to if she <coughs> talked to you. Uh, but she's been an advisor on the uh, Millennium Reserve. Uh, Suzanne Malik. Yes, oh, she's, she's, she's on, 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 she's on our list. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If she'll yes. talk to you, you get loads of <laughs> Now the size of the auditorium, if, if it's as large as uh, you say it is, uh, I would think that because I go to many meetings and the meetings are generally small, 20 people, we never use 100, 125 people um, auditorium. When we were researching for the uh, Hegwish Library, you may have come past it mm -hmm. here. I was on the um, uh, committee for the Hegwish Library and we were researching uh, libraries and they found out that we were going to libraries. So they, said, oh, you got to go see this or you got to go see that. Well, we saw they mo their most recent library in Mount Greenwood, and they had this great big auditorium mm -hmm. and a little small uh, room where they could use computers, a little small. And I said, uh-uh. One, one thing. Mm -hmm. So we got a smaller, mm -hmm. we got a smaller uh, uh, meeting room and a larger room where they could have computers in there. And they even moved out. Right. With, in there, they need more. With respect to the design of those things, one of the things that drives me nuts in recent designs is that you get meeting rooms and, and such and auditorium type spaces that are designed in such a way that you cannot darken the room. Mm -hmm. You'll have shades that come down, but they come down, but there are overhead windows that aren't covered. Right, right. The, uh, hmm. what, the, the harbor side, uh, not harbor right. side, the other one over in Whiting was well, a perfect example. We had a meeting there and there was no place yeah. you wouldn't be. If you wanted to see what was on the screen, you better be right in front of the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they had these, you know, Trans eyebrow windows yeah. or something up there, and it was just good. We have shades for the lower part, yeah. but we've got three feet up above that isn't shaded. So mm -hmm. we need to make spaces that work yeah. for yes. multi purposes. Like we need a darkened, darkened room when we want to project something. Right. Another yeah. big problem, and it's just 
everywhere. You get a big group. People want to have slides. How many people can see those? Just from how far away you are, mm -hmm. or the yeah. screen is nowhere near big mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a particular pet peeve of mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Little tiny print, right? <laughs> oh, and then they've got to put those points in that they will <laughs> say anyway. Yeah. Uh, but even a picture of nature doesn't come across unless you're really close to that screen. It, it's, it, if we get this building, or pardon me, when we get this building, yeah. we want to make sure that those things are soft. Put a jumbotron in there. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, it'll probably fit, maybe. You could put an extra on a roof a little bit. One other thing real quick before we have to go off to our respective spaces or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, for the past eight years, we've had something called the 10th Ward Green Summit. Mm -hmm. It started as a one-day event in May, and it has grown to a one-month event, all mm -hmm. of May. And um, participation has varied. Uh, I don't know whether it was the economic downfall or whatever that... Uh, kind of brought people back in, but the, the point is that we have a map of the entire area with 44 items that people should pay attention to because it's green buildings, green gardens, mm -hmm. and green open space. Uh, Best Nest has been on that list from the beginning. And so there have been a few others, like Solar Verde, I don't know if you're aware of that, mm -hmm. but it was uh, zero energy houses. The gentleman wanted to build uh, twenty of he them. Did, yeah, he built yeah. two. Yeah, he built yeah. two. Two and models. Wasn't able to sell them. Are yeah. they are they occupied now? The Clarations you know, have, have been. Have been. She's the Clarations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Clarations. Yeah, Clarations. Uh, Angela yeah. and Herlock. Okay. Uh, so at any rate, uh, we still celebrate this. And if you look at the list of items, it's kind of a history. Um, not, it's not just the things that have succeeded, but also the things that, that fail, which is a kind of a great lesson because mm. solidarity is one of the things that, that fail. Does this have um, a website or any? Well, we um, I didn't bring maps today, but <laughs> <laughs> I should have. We have plenty of those, and we can get those out to you. Yeah, that'd be uh, good. But the, the whole concept of this, to celebrate this stuff, if it were housed in a building that uh, Embody mm -hmm. like the best of those mm -hmm. ideas, uh, that should more than put the temporary on that. Yeah. I go back to the mechanical stuff in the building, too. That I talked about the lighting and, and things like that. The sound is everything. Right now, I'm getting this camera can handle it, so I'm getting this constant sound from the fan right now. But for quite a few minutes in here, it was quiet. And that makes a tremendous difference. When the space is designed, it would be great if auditoriums and places like that were designed in such a way that when someone is speaking, they could actually be heard that the building circulatory system or something isn't overpowering everything that's going on. These kinds of things. Sometimes I wonder where the designers work if they don't you know, ever use any of these spaces themselves. So the sound is awfully important like for recording events, too, for historical purposes. You don't want to be fighting against a, a major air conditioner or something like that that's just kaboom. We have that in the field house over at uh, Calumet Park. And when that thing kicks in, it's like a 747 in the room. You know, forget it. You're not going to get it. I think they addressed that. Yeah. Yes, next steps. Um, as we said, we've got about 25 or 9 people to talk to. We're in day two right now. We've really got a packed week this week and next week. But we think our stakeholder interviews and focus group will probably last for the next two or three weeks. So I'm starting with. After that, we're going to put together everything that we've heard and come up with a variety of themes and different information to present to the public. And that's when we'll have our first public open house. The first public open house will be a summary of what we heard, 
kind of a summary of themes that we've heard, and then we'll ask people for ideas. So we're gonna we're gonna present our themes because we want to get people thinking, and then we can help people react and, and think of their ideas. Um, collect information from the greater community, um, and then we're gonna go back and come up with our, our <coughs> feasibility study, our recommendation, essentially, um, that will reflect what we heard from the stakeholders and focus groups, what we heard from the public, and then we'll bring that back one more time to the public, get our final round of feedback, polish up our report, and that will be that. We are tied to a 12-month timeline um, through the grant, so we started probably at the end of May, so we're hoping to be done sooner than that. Um, Just in time for the roads to be. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, right? Exactly. Shelter, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the Green yeah. Summit. <laughs> yeah, and the Green Summit, yeah. Exactly. yeah, the green yeah. Summit. So we have all of your contact information. So you'll be in our, on our loop. Um, so you'll for sure hear about the first public open house. Also, we'd love it if you would help us get the word out um, when the time comes. We haven't scheduled it yet. But Do you have sites that you're thinking of? We're going to work with the Park District and the Alderman oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So we haven't decided. Yet, but it's so helpful if people when these um, open houses dates are public or come up with time locations. For you to share those with your contacts and just get the word out is way much more effective than anything you can do. So yeah. Newspapers are useless for that. They don't they don't even print anything that we put on. Oh. Yeah. Once in a while we'll catch their eye and Yeah. <laughs> I still put out my own news releases. Yeah. Ah, newspaper. I'm out of land. Newspaper. Gives you time to think. You're reading an article. We're not on to the next picture. You can think about what you want. I am a big fan of newspapers and the dying. We'll be talking about what you show people. Yeah, we are all nervous. We spoke to Jerry Edelman and um, I can't Tom Hopkins. Yes, we also spoke to Jerry Edelman and Mark Bowman last year. And um, Mike Bo Mark Bowman, Mark Bowman. And, and oh, O'Brien. Oh, James. General Bryan is from the environmental. Oh, sorry. sorry. The environmental fund folks are all right. They're they're the ones that are managing the six million for Ford. So they're kind of keepers, and Ford is rep represented on that. But yes, to answer your question, yes, we are. Those are the only people from the one who deserve. No, no everybody's on our list. Them. John Rodner, Jerry Edelman, Mike Park Bowman are are on our list. Is there others that we want yeah. to talk? Well, I would think that I mean, there's a whole steering committee, and this has been discussed at quite great lengths with the uh, reserve steering committee. Yeah. And, and um, at the uh, Calumet uh, Summit, what was this? What was the summit called? Was it the Calumet Summit last year? Where they took the vote? Yeah. Yes, we learned about that. that. Yeah. 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 Every other year at least. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, at both places, there were there was a poll taken, mm -hmm. and, and like with the with the money reserve, we had we voted on what the uh, priorities should be because we knew we couldn't tackle it. There were 130 ideas that went into a hopper yeah. with the money reserve. I just sure. give you a little context on that, that from those that you voted on, 14 were selected for 2014, announced by the governor at the end of June. And then for most 14, the Chicago Community Trust picked a couple that they thought were worth funding, and that, that's how we were. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, there, I don't know exactly how many people are around the scary community, yeah. 25 or 30 people. Fairly like large that. committee, yes. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how many. I think the park district just broke it down into key individuals and said pick these five because we're going to be doing this until next right. October. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Yeah. 
But if you think there's somebody that we should, or, then, then tell us. Well, it sounds like you're hitting yeah. most of them. Uh, Jers Anderson from Open Lands uh, knows this area. He knows all the rivers, all the, all the trails. He's, he's already given us a trail map. Yeah. We, we, when we were in a meeting with Jerry Edelman, he pulled he him in oh, yeah. and gave us a little appetizer, but we told him, don't think you're done with us. <laughs> we we have, really? still have an, an interview scheduled for that. So. Yeah, we keep pulling him back. He's from the south side. He now lives in the state. Yeah. 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 Uh, another thing, uh, I, I think that uh, you can see sort of the pulling back that uh, has happened. And see that uh, used to uh, have its uh, facilities elsewhere, the need elsewhere, right? Secret, right? Oh, and yeah, we ran a, a, a private club but, but the point is, that there, the yes. space for yes. meetings mm -hmm. uh, has been difficult. Well, imagine if people had a regular space. Where they could meet and they could make plans. It seemed to me that um, much of the programming currently do would be enhanced tremendously. All the tours, you could even get your own trolley. Rubber wheel trolley? Uh, So, I mean, that's industry, right? Yeah. So, we, we just we have to connect with all that. Because yeah. that's, that's how. That's another work. thing. I worked yeah. in this. I worked are. for Did you? years. Yeah. I was in an office. I worked during public steel. That's My okay. dad worked Almost everybody steel. has worked yes. in the military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or had students who yeah. quit school and came back the next week. Showing you their paycheck, and you realize yes. if you multiply that, the number of weeks they were making more than the teachers were. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> so, All right. I think you have to keep in mind that you have an opportunity to build something that's beautiful. All these conversations sound like you're going to build something designed by a committee, and uh, you have a chance to really put something out. Enduring value, and you can be used for a lot of stuff. Agree, agree. Mm -hmm. We're not designing anything. We're just all the doors listening right now. Somebody else is going to come up with a great design. <laughs> well, maybe no. if you let it, let him put his name on it, Donald Trump. Yeah, he will. Uh, yeah, yeah. take care of the whole thing. Oh, He'll take care of right the check. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, have you seen? Yeah. I mean, during the day, it's, it's at night, it's awful. Oh, during the day, it's only awful. <laughs> it's awful. He's a ghost man. Then, mm, all right. Well, thank you so much. All right. For your thank time. you very much. Yeah, we can.